Good morning, and welcome to Daylight with Dean number 197 on October 30th, 2020. I'm so grateful that you are here with me this morning. I have my hot cup of freshly poured coffee ready to go. Mm. If you think it smells good. Mm. Let's enjoy our coffee together. That is, uh, that is good stuff. That is good stuff. Well, guys, it's Friday. Um, if you were to pick a favorite day of the week, uh, what would yours be? Each day, because of the rhythm of our life, typically uh, brings different um, dynamics to it and just wondered what if you had a day that was your favorite day of the week, what would that day be? Um, as a kid, and I know I'm, I'm going to do what, what people hate, I'm going to answer the opposite of that question. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the uh, least favorite day of the week. <laughs> Why is it that when we ask for one thing, we often get the exact opposite? <laughs> so when I was a kid, uh, my mother had aspirations that all three of her children would become spectacular piano players. Uh, my mother, uh, just that was one of her plans. And <laughs> oh, so we took piano lessons really, really early on as kids from a lady named Sandy who lived uh, at the chapel um, in Spring Church. She was a friend of the family and we would go to her little, little place and she had a Pyrenees dog, a little yapper. And I ne we always had collies. I never understood how she uh, would have this tiny dog that yapped nonstop, but it was, it, this dog hated us and hated me. <laughs> and I remember going there as a real little kid for piano lessons, and then my sister got good. She got really good. And so then my mother, like, it was always the best is the best. And my sister gave piano lessons for like, it, it cost like, um, three dollars for a half hour i think back in the mid 70s when she started giving uh when she started giving lessons and uh yeah i think 1978 she started giving lessons and driving and she would charge three dollars an hour she would drive to the people's house and then i'm getting somewhere with this story i promise she would drive to the people's house and then she would give them a half hour lesson at their house and then they would pay her three dollars for that half hour lesson and i remember wow that's 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 real money there so my my sister got really good on the piano 
And so my mother decided that she wanted to give her every opportunity to become the best that she could become. And they uh, got her a beautiful, beautiful baby grand piano for her 16th birthday, I think, or 14th birthday. I don't remember which one. I think 14th, maybe. And then we um, uh, started taking piano lessons from Mr. Franklin. Now, Mr. Franklin was an accomplished pianist that lived in the Squirrel Hill area or Greenfield. I can't, I can't remember exactly where he lived. I think he lived more in Greenfield, which uh, was quite a ways from our house, at least a half hour. Plus, it was on the other side of the Squirrel Hill Tunnels coming from the Monroeville side. So it was an issue. So as a kid on Wednesdays, we went to a Christian school that the bus ride home took us an hour. Well, on Wednesdays, there was, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking through this and can't believe that's how it really was. Uh, the bus came by our house a mile from our house at the beginning of its run. So my mother worked it out for the bus driver to leave us off in the middle of nowhere, close to Boggs Hollow Road and drop us off there. And then we would walk a mile home. It wasn't uphill both ways. It was just uphill on the way home. <laughs> we would walk a mile home. And uh, can I interrupt my story again and tell you about some of my memorable walks home? I remember once kicking a rock the whole way home because it was a paved road. I have no idea what that did to my shoes. I can't imagine that was good. But then to show you how challenging I was as a kid, I remember as an eight or nine year old boy having those metal lunch boxes. I decided to kick my metal lunch box the whole way home. <laughs> now, I don't think it had a glass thermos. I think it had the plastic thermos uh, inside it. So I don't think I broke the thermos. But I, I remember kicking, and I don't know if it was the $6 million man lunchbox or, or which one it was. I remember kicking my lunchbox the entire way home. Now, can you imagine being a parent and having had bought your child a metal lunchbox for school and then coming home and seeing it after it had been kicked home for a mile the whole way home? I just thought of that. that, was, that was, I was not uh, an easy kid. <laughs> so uh, my mother taught school, and somehow she would drive home from Monroeville. She taught at Gateway. Pick us up in Delmont. It was a Greensburg address, but it was in the Delmont area right off of 22. Pick us up in Delmont, and then she would drive us to Mr. Franklin's house in Greenfield, back in toward Pittsburgh. And then we would each have our half hour piano lesson. And this was on Wednesdays. We would each have our half hour piano lesson. And my sister's, oh, it was so good. Mine, they never explained to me why I had to learn the scales. Da -da 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 never. Never made sense to me. I wanted to learn how to play songs. I didn't want to learn how to play scales. <laughs> and we were supposed to practice a half hour a day, and Mr. Franklin could tell when I didn't practice a half hour a day. And it, I hardly practiced a half hour a day. And, uh, and my sister would have her lesson, then I would have my lesson, and then my younger brother would have his lesson. Now, during the hour and a half or so that we were there with our lessons, it was probably closer to two hours or an hour and 45 minutes, uh, we would do homework. And my mother was a school teacher and she would be in there doing homework with us. Uh, and my mother paid $20 per child per 30 minutes when the going rate was three. And so she would pay $60 a week back in 1978, 1979, 
for the three of us to have our piano lessons. And uh, it, that just exasperated my dad to death. However, we would then leave there and we would drive to our church in Murraysville. But if you notice, there was no time for dinner. So we would stop at a fast food place in Murraysville on the right-hand side across from, if you're on the right-hand side, if you're headed uh, east, away from Pittsburgh. Uh, on the right-hand side, there was a small um, fast food restaurant called Sandy's. And I think it was a one-off. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think it was a franchise. And they had the best cheeseburgers in the world. And so I would get a cheeseburger for dinner. I don't know what my siblings got. And then we would drive about the four miles, three or four miles back road, maybe three miles, to get to the First Church of God of Murraysville, where we would have Wednesday night church and youth group. So we had children's programming and then youth group on Wednesday nights. And we would get home after that probably around 9 o'clock. And I realized into adulthood <laughs> that Wednesdays were my least favorite day of the week. And I think that is, uh, I think that's why. Um, my sister and brother are great piano players. Uh, I am not. Uh, after college, when I was 22 years old, I thought, you know what? I might have just been too immature to play the piano back then. I'd like to play it now. So I was at a church in southern Illinois for 10 months, and the uh, friend of our family that I was a very gifted pianist um, lived in the next town over, and I started taking piano lessons from her. And I remember really wanting to learn the piano. And I just could never sync up the left hand doing something different than the right hand as far as rhythm and half notes and quarter notes and beats and, and this doing this and this doing this. I, I could never, I didn't have the rhythm to do it. I, I, if, I could, if, I could, if I could learn to play a song, it was so, like if I learned, I was learning elementary stuff. And so if I learned to play the swing or a, a, a children's song, uh, it was so choppy and methodical. It had no majest, majestic uh, feel to it. It had no, uh, it, it was like, please stop. <laughs> Not because I played the wrong notes, but because I had no sense of how to make it flow, H how to make it, I may... And I realized I, I could work for years. I was projecting and assuming. I, I felt like I could work for years and become technically correct, but there would be no joy, no, uh, nothing in it that would be pleasing to those who heard it or pleasing to me that played it because I would be so concerned about getting it right that I would be uh, unaware of the way to get it to sound magical. So um, Wednesdays for, and I got to tell you, um, it's never shifted. And even though that's been 40 years ago, um, it, it every time Wednesday rolls around, it's like, ooh. <laughs> so, uh, needless to say, uh, I enjoy Fridays. Um, I'm looking forward to this Friday. Uh, the weather forecaster indicated that the rain will be stopping in time and uh, look like the sun should come out, uh, that the rain should be stopping and... Um, um, we'll be able to film today, this afternoon, around 3 o'clock uh, in a way that uh, I won't have to bring an umbrella. 
Uh, I got a request from a friend yesterday uh, to stop filming around traffic because her anxiety level, she's terrified I'm going to get hit by a car and all the movement with all the automobiles and all the commotion makes her nauseous. <laughs> so, Denise, I will try to honor your uh, request there. I'll do the best that I can. I think I found a spot that has a little more serenity to it today. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Mm. Worked on the message quite a bit yesterday. Have some great videos that we're going to be embedding into our, our in-person service and our online sermon. Uh, just have two of them that I feel very, uh, very good about. It's always, it's always um, meaningful to me and helpful to find a video that kind of advances the the theme of the message. And we have, uh, we have a couple that do that. So looking forward to that. Um, at the beginning of this series, um, I, I preached the first sermon from the first chapter of the book of Revelation, used almost the entire chapter. Last week, um, used one verse from Revelation chapter 5, I think verse 9. Uh, this week, uh, unless something emerges, I don't think we'll have one verse from the book of Revelation. So I apologize for the misleading uh, advertising of the series that we were going to be camping out in the book of Revelation the entire time. I do know, however, that the next two messages <laughs> um, do, the, the rest of the messages do deal very strongly in the book of Revelation, at least the last two. So, um, maybe not, the, I, I'm not sure. So, <laughs> if you were camping out on this book uh, series, hoping for a detailed working through the book of Revelation, I apologize for misleading as my words would have. Uh, but, uh, just struggling a bit to find text in Revelation that support the message that we feel led to preach. So, um, but looking looking forward to that. Looking forward to recording it today, and uh, I'm grateful. Uh, made it to the gym yesterday. Uh, worked out upper body, and uh, upper body is. Uh, delightful to work out when you have worked out your lower body the day before. And uh, then I went to my friends um, at eight and the whole workout there was upper body as well. So, <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying uh, that. I had my physical yesterday for my life insurance policy. And the in-home healthcare person that was coming to draw blood, um, it was it was an adventure. Um, she poked and prodded me for several minutes in this arm, or starting in the left arm, and couldn't couldn't get it. And then she was confident she could get it in this arm, and she poked and prodded and pried for several minutes with the needle, like moving it around on, in this arm, and she she pulled it out exasperated and just didn't know what, quite what to do. And I'm like, well, I said, is there, is there any way you can use these veins in the back of my hand? She goes, oh, yes, I, I should have looked there first. Those will work great. <laughs> I'm like, well, I wish I would have recommended them first because I have big veins in the back of my hand. And so a third needle was inserted into my body to draw blood. <laughs> I had more band-aids and cotton swabs and uh, cotton uh, under the band-aids yesterday for a while and then I just reached the point where I yanked them off and band-aids aren't fun yanking them off skin <laughs> um, but it was a it was a good day yesterday thank you for your support for those who um, I shared that Wednesday how about that <laughs> Wednesday was a challenging day for me. Uh, 
and uh, Leslie's rounding the rounding the bend for her second cup of coffee this morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> She's watching her House Hunters. She records House Hunters International every day in hopes that it has a, um, an adventure looking for places in Italy. She loves her Italy. And one of the most grateful things I have about Daylight is I don't have to watch every House Hunters with her. <laughs> Sorry, Les. I, I, I enjoy going to other parts of the world, but it's, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, so, um, she, when, whenever Leslie gets to Italy, whenever she, uh, takes an adventure on the TV, uh, to Italy, it's a good day. And Italy is an amazing country. And we look forward to getting back there together again. We went uh, 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago now. And then Leslie went last summer when she took Abby over to Italy for her summer teaching job. She had teaching English to American children over there. And so now um, wants to figure out how to get back. And so I'm sure we'll be trying to figure that out as soon as we can. Um, well, guys, thank you for sharing this time with me today. Thank you for allowing me to reminisce about my Wednesdays as a kid and my lunchbox. Kick the, kick the can the whole way home. I kicked the lunchbox the whole way home and uh, sharing this time together. I hope that today is one of your favorite days this week. I hope that you have a great day filled with anticipation and joy. I pray that you will have opportunities to express grace and compassion and love throughout your day. And I pray that uh, you will invite the Lord and his presence to be with you today, navigating your day with you, and that you will walk in step with his spirit today. Now let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so grateful for the opportunity that we have to spend this time together Thank you for mornings with friends. Thank you for uh, your love and your goodness and your faithfulness. And Father, I pray that you would bless each person here today. May your trustworthiness be on display so that we can see it clearly. And Father, when we can't see it clearly, may we trust even more then. And Father, I pray that you would watch over each of us today. Help us navigate all that's ahead for us. If something blindsides us or knocks us off course, I pray that we will lean into you and that your grace will carry us through. I pray, Lord, that peace and joy and life and gratitude would be our companion today. And it is with great anticipation that we look forward to all that is ahead for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks everybody, great to be with you and can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. I'm not sure if tomorrow morning I'll wait till 7.50 when it's, um, when it is sunrise for New Kensington or if I will be on early again. I'm, I'm leaning towards sleeping in a little bit tomorrow morning, so I'll probably be on closer to sunrise on Saturday, the 31st, the longest, latest day that there is for the sun to rise because of daylight savings time. So God bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>